Alrighty, today we're gonna to be looking at the topic five test review, which is all about quadratic functions, factoring, going to Desmos and all that stuff. Uh, number one says, which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the XY plane from which the coordinates of the vertex can be identified as constants in the equation. So the vertex is this point A, which is at negative two comma negative 16. And this may influence what you think the answer might be, depending on what you see in those answer choices. What you do have to remember is vertex form, where vertex form says that your vertex is at h comma k, and your formula is gonna be f of x is equal to a times x minus h, in this case, h is negative two, so x minus negative two would be the same thing as x plus two squared, uh, plus k, so we're gonna put minus 16 at the end. So we can see that just by using the vertex form, we can find out that, oh, okay, this is the only one in vertex form, so this must be the answer. Um, another way you could have done this is by going to Desmos and graphing all the answer choices. So first I just graph the vertex. If we graph answer choice A, we see that as a potential option. There's the correct answer, answer choice C. And you'll notice that uh, answer choices B and D are not even going to have the same vertex as the, uh, as the original picture that we were looking at. So um, you could also eliminate it just by graphing all the answer choices and narrowing it down to A and C, and then realizing that, okay, C is the only one in vertex form. Alrighty. Let's move on to number three. We are skipping number two because you can do this one on your own. Uh, and that, by the way, here's a hint for number four. So pause the video if you're working on number four. There's, the, there's your hint. Number three, write the function in vertex form. We're going to do this by uh, completing the square. And what I mean by that is like literally we're going to complete the square. The first thing we have to do is get rid of the GCF, the greatest common factor of all three of these terms. Well, they can all be divided by two. So we can actually factor out a two from this entire thing. Two times X squared would give me two X squared. Two times two X would give me that four X and two times 12 would give me that 24. So what, all we've done is take out that greatest common factor. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to complete the square by building a box and trying to fill it out in the way that we showed you. Uh, in which case you're gonna take x squared, put it in the top left, and then you're gonna split your b term in half. So b is two x. So I'm gonna put one x here and one x here. As you can see, nothing's changed so far. We do have to include the plus 12 outside. So that's something that we do have to keep in mind. And now we try to figure out what are the factors outside of the box. X times X gets me X squared. Well, that means that this has to be a one because X times one gives me one X. And same thing on the bottom left here. If we complete the square, one times one is one, and that is something new. So we have to subtract it outside. So that way we don't change the value here. What this means is that f of x is equal to two times, and then we'll do a big parenthesis because we took out that two, x plus one squared plus 11. Okay, that's just by combining positive 12 and minus one. If we distribute the two to everything inside, we get f of x is equal to two times x plus one squared plus uh, two times 11 would be 22. So that is how you do number three. And in general, this is how you would complete the square um, if you were trying to get something in vertex form. Here we can see it is in vertex form. We have a x minus h plus k. Okay, so we have vertex form here. Alternate way to do it is if you just graph it. And if you know the vertex is at h comma k, well, if this was multiple choice, it would have been really simple just to figure out, okay, my vertex is at negative one comma 22. And if I graph it in vertex form, we can see it right there. So you can also check your answer in Desmos. All right, moving on. Once again, hint for number four right there. Number six, okay, for this one, you must remember not only standard form, 
which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, but you also need to remember the Desmos version of this, where you need to put y1 squiggle ax1 squared plus bx1 plus c. Okay, to do this, you need to add a table in Desmos. Okay, put your three points. There are my three points right there. And then you type in the formula I just mentioned, y1 squiggle ax1 squared plus bx1 plus c. And then it gives you the values of a, b, and c. a is equal to one, b is equal to zero, and c is equal to negative 2.25, okay? We put one in the place where a goes, we put a zero in the place where b goes, and then instead of putting plus c, we'll put minus 2.25. Since zero times x is just zero, and since one times x squared is just x squared, we can simplify it to this right here. And you'll notice that on every step of the way, you can check and make sure by making sure those graphs match up. So my equation will be right here, y equals x squared minus 2.25. All right, number seven, it says label the focus and directrix on the graph below. Okay, there's my directrix, that's gonna be the line. And here is my focus, we'll label that F. Just to make note of things, let's, uh, let's actually describe what these points are. So F is at the point two comma negative two. And the directrix is gonna be the equation Y equals negative four, because we see it crosses negative four right here. Okay, I know that the vertex is going to be exactly in between. So if this whole distance is two, if we cut that in half, we can find the vertex right here at uh, two comma negative three, exactly halfway. What else I want you to notice here is that this distance we call P, that's your focal length, which is the same as this distance right here. So the value of P is equal to that distance, which is one unit. So that's something to keep in mind, okay? Since we have the vertex, we actually have H and K right here, okay, where H is equal to two and K is equal to negative three. Okay, and to find the value of A, all we have to do is use this formula, which you will be provided during the test. A is equal to one divided by four times P, in which case P is equal to one. So A is just equal to one over four, okay? Once you have these, uh, all of these things, you'll notice that if we just look for one fourth where A is supposed to be, I can tell that C and D are not the answer. And if you look for H and K, I know it should be X minus H squared plus K, in which case H is two and K is negative three. So obviously the answer is A and you are welcome to go to Desmos and graph this and verify this. Okay. Uh, here is your hint for number nine. Once again, I'm not going to do number nine with you, but I gave you a hint. Factor the expression. So if you have not understood factoring this whole time, this is your time to, to shine, okay? What you're going to do is make a box. Our goal here is to turn this into a multiplication fact, like something times something. Just like if you were to factor 12 into two times three, okay? Okay. So all we need to do is figure out what goes outside this box, given that we fill it in correctly. How to fill it in correctly? You take the first term, you put it in the top left, and you take the last term and you put it in the bottom right. The diagonal terms, whatever these are, they need to add up to negative 13. Okay? Well, and then you start guessing and checking what must go outside the box. Well, we have x times x. Oh, that works. And then we need to think of two numbers that multiply to give me 36, but add up to negative 13. So two numbers that multiply to give me negative 36 to, to positive 36 and add up to negative 13. Well, I'm already thinking six times six or maybe even negative six times negative six, but that would equal negative 12 if we were to add those up. So let's see, what, what else can we divide 36 by? Let's see, we could divide it by 13. We could do 13 and three, but once again, that would not add up to negative 13. Uh, let's see, what about a negative nine times negative four? If we take negative nine times negative four, we get 36. And if we add them up, we get negative 13. So these must be my two numbers that go outside. How do we check? All we have to do is fill in the rest of the box. This would be negative nine X. This would be negative four X. 
And yes, if you do add up those two yellow terms, you will get the, the B term, negative 13x. Okay, so that must mean that my factors are x minus 9 and x minus 4. Okay, the other way to do this, once again, you won't be surprised, is to go to Desmos and see where it crosses the x-axis. These are your solutions. And pretty much, you can just take your solutions and switch the signs, and then there is your graph. X minus 4, X minus 9. So the solutions will tell you what to factor it into if you go and look at it on the graph. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you don't know how to factor, go graph it. Maybe something magical will happen. All right, moving right along. Number 10, the discriminant. The discriminant looks like this. Okay, and there's a few things that can happen. If this is positive, you get uh, two solutions. If it's zero, you get one solution. And if it's negative, you get zero solutions or zero real solutions. We'll talk about that later, okay? So in order to determine this, we need to take this equation and rewrite it in standard form and set it equal to zero. To do that, I'm just gonna show you on Desmos, my math here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is just start with my original, which is seven minus three X equals eight X squared. To set this equal to zero, I'm gonna move all of this stuff over to the right side of the equation. So the first thing I did was add three X to both sides to get rid of that. And then all I did was subtract seven on both sides. So that way this would be set equal to zero. As you can see, nothing in my graph changes. So I know that all of my steps are correct. Okay, once we're here, it's actually pretty easy to figure out what A, B, and C are. We can tell that A is equal to eight. So you can type that in. You can also tell that B is equal to three and that C is equal to negative seven. Once we type all those in, we just need to go look at what the discriminant formula is from our, from our review here. It's b squared minus 4ac. And when we go back here, we just type that in. Oops, I messed up a. Make that an 8. Okay, so we just type that in. b squared. And you, you can see that Desmos is already doing the work for us. b squared minus 4ac. And you get 233, which is positive which means that there are two solutions. The other way to tell is just by looking at the graph, you can tell that it crosses. I know that this is not a parabola, but you can still tell that it crosses twice. So you can still use the graph for to determine there are two solutions. Okay, on to complex numbers. So the thing I wanna keep in mind is the most important fact about complex numbers is that I, is equal to the square root of negative one. More importantly, I squared equals negative one. So as I reference this today, I'm gonna to keep looking back at this formula. This is the most important thing you can know about complex numbers. I squared equals negative one. To do this, um, we just need to add them up like normal expressions. For the first parentheses, you can just get rid of them. For the second parentheses, you need to keep in mind that this negative is going to distribute to all my terms. So we're gonna have negative 12 I squared plus, okay, because that negative times a negative makes a positive plus five I, okay? And then we remember, okay, I squared is equal to negative one. So we start to simplify further. We see that uh, we have five I and five I. So we're gonna have five plus 10 I minus 12 times negative one, because we know that I squared is equal to negative one. Okay, once we're here, we just need to simplify it a little bit further. Let's see, this would become a positive 12. So this is five plus 12 plus 10 I. And we just combine these two terms, that would be 17 plus 10 I. Okay, once your, uh, once your complex number looks like this, you know you're done. Okay, this is as simplified as it can get. A plus bi. Let's try one more complex number problem, this time using the box. We have five plus two i squared. If we remember, anything squared is just that thing times itself. Okay, so we're gonna take five plus two i 
times 5 plus 2i. To do this, we need to make a box uh, with our four sections outside of the box. Since we're multiplying, we start on the outside. We're going to say 5 plus 2i times 5 plus 2i. And then we fill in the box just like normal by multiplying the rows and columns. 5 times 5 is 25. Uh, 5 times 2i is 10i. Once again, on the bottom left, we have 5 times 2i, so that would be 10i as well. And then lastly, we have 2 times 2, which is 4, and then we have i times i, which is i squared, which we know is equal to negative 1. Okay, we take everything in the box and we add it up. We take 25 plus, well, we can combine these two. We'll take 10i plus 10i, that'd be 20i. Just combining those diagonals. Plus 4 times i squared. We remember i squared is equal to negative 1. So that's really going to be a minus 4. So this equals 25 minus 4 plus 20i, which would be equal to 21 plus 20i. And we know we're done because, once again, it looks like a plus bi. All right, last problem I believe that I will do on this review is going to be this one right here. Okay, it says if xy is a solution of the system of equations above and x is greater than 0, what is the value of x times y? So eventually we're going to have to take whatever the x number is and multiply it by the y number. Okay? So let's see. Um, if we go graph these, this is going to be a U shape and this is going to be a line. And on Desmos, it looks like this. Okay? And we'll just draw a quick sketch of that on our review where it does cross in two different places. So the two different places are super important. If we look on Desmos, we'll see that they cross at negative two comma four and three comma nine. Negative two comma four and three comma nine. So it's saying that if x comma y is a solution, which both of these are, right? Two, negative two comma four and three comma nine are both solutions. And x is greater than zero, meaning that x has to be positive what is the value of x times y? So it's either we're going to take this solution and we're going to take negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8, or we're going to take this solution. We're going to take 3 times 9, which is 27. And already we can see those answer choices on there. It can only be one of these two since we're taking x times y. Most importantly, it says x has to be positive. 3 is positive. Negative 2 is not positive. So we have to use 3 times 9 answer is 27. You can also do that math in Desmos um, just to verify for yourself. Once again, we do not want a negative x value. You can also just only consider the solutions where x is greater than zero, in which case it will highlight that part of the graph and we can see that that is the only solution where x is greater than zero. Alrighty, I believe that is it. I hope you study well. And I hope you get this review all the way done. If you want to pass your test, that is what you have to do. Remember to always use Desmos and to check your answers on there. And if you don't know what to do, just go graph it. This has been Mr. Story. Uh, checking out. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, uh, uh. Bruh.